what's up guys? Ancient here, bringing you another episode of Pathfinder Kingmaker. Let us see. Huh. Yeah, whatever. You come from Patax, right? Tell me about it. Oh, I love Patax, even though they kicked me out. A joyful place. What is life in Patax like? Actually, Patax has always been one huge nest of thieves. Bandits, river pirates, smugglers, fences, card shops. It's always been home for the likes of them. But that was before Iravetti became king. With him, a whole different life began there. Iravetti always wanted to make history, but not as another bandit with a crown. Though that's exactly what he is. Haha. <laughs> he wanted to be glorified through the centuries as a great patron of the arts. So he built the Academy of Grand Arts and spent lots of gold to assemble the best artists, poets, and musicians. Of course, the very best ones refused to go, but he got what he wanted in a way. If Patax was just uh, was once just a booze barn for thieves, it's now a carabe uh, cabaret. I don't know what that means. What do you know of King Aravetti? He won his crown in a game of cards. Which says as much about Patax as it does about him. He's fiendishly clever. Some cheats I know told me that from the moment he appeared, he started pulling off such schemes that the old city masters just scratched their heads. With him in charge, gold flooded into Patax, and also, he's incredibly, unimaginably, fantastically decadent and conceited. Getting drunk with whores at the pub. That's not the Lord Iravetti's style. No, he aims higher, dressing up like a male Calistria. With a golden codpiece and holding a three-week orgy with dancing on rooftops, parades, public executions, and a contest for best for the best ode to the great unrivaled king. Holy fuck. Well then. That man's a fucking psychopath. Probably a sociopath as well. Uh-huh. You know, jokes aside, I'm thankful for your Rivetti, Taylor Rivetti for building it. But he has no taste at all whatsoever. He likes his art loud, bright, grandiose, and most importantly glorifying his royal highness. He kicked out the best charcoal artist because he didn't wish to spend money on grey scribbles. He sacked a masterful flute player from Tian Xia for playing too quiet quietly, and instead ordered them to open a, open a kettle drum class. He even ordered the academy to expel me for an innocent limerick! Wow. Would you like to go back to the academy to finish your studies? I'd like to return, but on one condition. If they threw out three quarters of the professors who teach there now and returned all the ones they banished. If you ask me, I'm proud to have been expelled. If my art was to his liking, then I would have reason to be ashamed. Okay. March on. Hmm. Let's fucking go. Yes, I did ruffle their feather feathers. Ah. Hmm. I need to take care of the stag lord. Do you know of anything that could help me find him? That's quite a task you've set, o set yourself on. The stag lord has a fortress somewhere in the area, but only a few chosen from the most of a, from the most trusted of his rabble are ever invited. The location of the fortress is a heavily guarded secret, and with the f this fog hanging around, I'd imagine it would be even harder to find. I suppose you could try to follow the trail of those bandits who attacked the post before. They came from the southwest from the side of the Th Thorn River. The fortress might be there, or at least some large camp of theirs where you can find more information. Yeah. Seems reasonable. Show me your wares.
fucking... No one can make use of that, so I guess I'll just get rid of it. How is... How am I still heavy? How is this possible? How do I tell? How do I tell if it helps? Oh, that's how. Yeah. It works! So wait, what do I do about this? How do I fix this? It is done. Whatever. Let us move out. What happened? Okay, that's what happened. Oh, fuck. A jittery old man in squalid clothing shovels, shuffles up to you. His ha gray hair is unkempt, and he continually clenches his un and unclenches his wrinkled, freckled hands. When he stops and looks up at you, his eyes widen and he tugs at his beard. Strange weather, invisible fog, creeping out of the woods, soars beyond the sky, obscures the sun and the moon. Strange. The old man shakes his head, his eyes shifting about seemingly at random. I don't like this old man. Looks like the kind who can cast the evil eye. Who are you? The old man freezes for a moment. Remus. But that won't help with the fog. What are you doing here? The old man raises a thick eyebrow curiously. I do nothing. Breathe. Walk. Observe. The fog looks invisible enough to me. Or visible enough to me. What the fuck am I even talking about? I see more than ever. I've se never seen so much before. The old man wipes his hand across his face and sighs wearily. But someone must look, and no one else can! Invisible fog? Does that mean you can find your way through it? The fog is wrong. It hinders your legs, not your sight. I wish not to try. I don't have time to listen to an old fool's nonsense. Be gone! Nah, I'll just be nice. The old man stares at you intently. You hasten? You should. Your rival wastes no time. He races, but in another direction. He searches for power. He'll find it. My rival, huh? The old man tugs at his beard again. He's not tall, but he wishes to climb high. Beside him are those who could stand against him, and might yet still. What power is he searching for? Someone else's, old but forever young, that which was taken from another, 
That which gave joy and now gives death. Where is he now? He's in an old tomb south of the trading post. Thank you. How do you know we're rivals? I don't know. I see. You can choose where you set your eyes, usually. But can you choose what they see? All the more reason not to linger. The old man turns and walks away, slowly, muttering softly. Once stolen, the land should be reclaimed. Once reclaimed, bound with the rec with the claimer it shall be. Bound, merged, joined by unbreakable ties. Claiming the land, claiming its pain, claiming its death. No stopping now. 